Last week we did a video of the 15 most unreliable cars ever made. And you guys were all like, oh my god, this guy doesn't have a clue what he's talking about. Even though I clearly said in the beginning of the video that it's based on consumer reports. Well today, we're going to do the same thing but with the most reliable cars ever made. Once again, based on consumer reports. This is not my opinion guys, okay? I'm not, I'm not the one sitting here saying that these are the 15 most reliable cars ever made. I disagree with this list heavily, but it's the consumer reports, okay? So the, everybody that owned the cars, what they reported, their problems with the cars. And that's a website put it into the top 15, and I'm just speaking it out to you. I'm just the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, let's get right into the list with number 15. Coming into the number 15 spot is going to go to the 1990 Honda Civic. No surprise here at all that a Civic was going to make the list. However, I was kind of surprised that it was a 1991. If you're a car guy, you know that that means that's the EG Civic. And even though I knew the EG Civics were reliable and I know that people love them for a reason, I didn't know they were this reliable. So coming in at number 50, 15 is, even though it's last on this list, that's still the 15th most reliable car ever built. It's still incredible. The only problem that people is uh, say that they have is these cars like to rust. That's it. There's some other like small things. If there's any sort of like really, really, really small things like, oh, this button will sometimes break. Uh, I'm not going to include that. But yeah, pretty much just rust. Next up at the number 14 spot is a car that I need to include in a lot more on my list now that I know about the car and I learned a little bit about it. It's the 1997 Volvo 900 series. There's a bunch of different Volvo 900s, but we're just talking about the it's, it's like the three, BMW 3 series, but with just just volvo uh, the only problem with the volvo 900 is it says that the sunroof will sometimes leak and it has some power seat issues both of those are incredibly minor power seat issues neither of my cars have power seats that work my z is supposed to it it doesn't the sunroof leaks yeah that, that can definitely be a little bit of an issue but it's also really easy to fix Next up at the number 13 spot, blacklist number 13 is going to the 1995 Mercedes-Benz W124. Again, W124 is more like a chassis code, so it's all about whether or not the, like, like, like what model that you get, like the E320 is one I would probably recommend, but a lot of people like the diesel Mercedes, and so uh, kind of up to you, you know, it, it's just the W124 chassis is the one that is here at number 13. The only issues is the light bulbs will go very fast, and it has wiring harness issues, which to me sounds like a big deal, because I hate wiring, I don't like wiring issues at all, but uh, apparently to the consumers, it wasn't that big of a deal because it made it above the Volvo 900 and the Honda Civic. I've always known these old Mercedes. Why can't Mercedes be like they were in the 90s, dude? They were making some reliable ass cars. Next up at number 12, shocker, we're back to the world of Honda. It's the 2007 Honda Accord, which if you are a car guy, again, you know that's a seventh generation Honda Accord. I'm going to assume, I'm going out on a limb here and assume that they're talking about the inline four, not the V6, um, but I'm assuming the V6 is also probably still pretty damn reliable. And the only problems that they have reported is that the back brakes will have some issues, the rear brakes. That's it. They're not even the front brakes, which is obviously what does most of the braking. No, the back ones, the, the rear brakes. Even if those do go, you still have 70% of your braking power. Like, it's mind-blowing. Hondas in general have always been really reliable. Accords are amazing cars. Buy yourself an Accord if you want a cool, fun little daily. Coming in at the number 11 spot is actually the same year, but the first Toyota. It's a Toyota Corolla. Don't worry, we're, that is not the last time we're going to be hearing the word Toyota, but it's the 2007 Toyota Corolla. They were just doing something great in 2007. I don't know what generation that is. I'm not the biggest Corolla guy out there, but if you do know, leave it in the comments. And the only issues that this car does have is airbags and some steering issues. Steering issues obviously can be an issue, um, but most likely what they mean by that is small things like the uh, tie rods and stuff like that doesn't really matter. I don't think they're me they mean that the whole like steering rack and pinion is going bad because if that was the case, then that would be an unreliable car. But either way, it's a Corolla. I mean, no surprise here. It's, I'm honestly surprised that it's not higher. Coming in at the number nine spot is going to the 2013 Toyota 4Runner, which is a truck suv what would you call it truck or suv i don't care suv that i personally really really like i've always loved the forerunners and i think the new ones are absolutely sexy okay they look great 2013 is i think like one of the first years that they came out with the new generation of forerunner would that be the fifth gen i think it's the fifth gen and the only issues that it says it has are airbag issues and some exhaust issues i'm pretty sure toyota in general just has a lot of issues with their um airbags because multiple Toyotas on this list have that, but the 4Runner is not only going to, uh, 
like get you to where you want to be and back on time, but it can go like off road, which is very different because a lot of these vehicles on this list are not all wheel drive SUVs. So props to them. Coming in at number eight spot, however, it is going to be a, another Toyota. Surprise, surprise, we're already at three. The 2015 Toyota Camry. Obviously, the Camry is commonly regarded to most people always, whenever they're joking around talking about reliability, they always bring up the Camry because the Camry is just that reliable. The only issue that the car does have is some power steering issues, which could be anything from the power uh, steering reservoir leaking to an actual issue with the power steering system. Who knows? But that's all that's been reported. And if it's at the number eight spot and the fact that it's a Camry anyway shows that it probably doesn't have that big of an issue. It's probably just a reservoir. And that's incredible. I loved Toyotas and their little like economy sedan cars. I would never buy them, but I love what they do for them. And the Camry is just like the pinnacle of that. Coming into the number seven spot is going to a Toyota in disguise. The 2015 Lexus ES. Again, most people will be like well where's what 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 version of the es it doesn't say it just says the lexus es so it could be any of the lexus es's but it's a 2015 model year i know that and the only issues that it has is honestly very weird braking issues like a bunch of the things that it was saying that it has for braking issues were things that were just like why would that break you know over like why would why wouldn't the brake pads wear out before that you know what i mean and so you definitely look into it a little bit uh you probably know more about it than i do to be honest so i would definitely recommend looking into it but yeah the only issues are some weird brake issues and brakes are never really that expensive unless it's like a freaking brake master cylinder but besides the master cylinder it's really not that expensive to fix anything with brakes Coming into the number six spot, and this is, I, I honestly, honestly, hand on my heart, think that this car should be one of the highest ones on this list, but it's only at number six. It's the 2017 Toyota RAV4. And the reason why I think that this should be significantly higher than the rest is because the only issue it has, the only issue reported with the 2017 Toyota RAV4 is that the spare tire has the incorrect air levels from factory. So, I mean, I guess if, yeah, that could be an issue if you get a flat tire and you got to put the spare on and, uh-oh, it's got five PSI lower than it's supposed to have. That is the only issue that the car has. That's mind-blowing. Toyota is just incredible. They just make these, by the way, you're going to notice that there's no Teslas on this list. I don't know why everybody's all like, oh, Teslas are the most reliable car in the world right now. Toyota is still on top in terms of reliability. Good. Only a spare tire having an issue. That's incredible. Coming in at the number five spot is going to... A surprise one, a shocker, a, a left fielder here. The 2021 Mazda Miata. This is the ND Miata, in case you're uh, wondering. It is, it is one of my favorite Miata. I love the ND. I think it's absolutely beautiful. But the only issues with the ND Miata that people are con uh, saying is that the interior pieces rattle a little bit and the convertible top can be a pain to put up. Not that the convertible top breaks and not that the convertible top doesn't work, just that it can be a pain in the ass to put it up. That's it. And then the interior pieces rattle a little bit. That's somehow people are surprised about that because they're buying a freaking dirt cheap roadster sports car made by Mazda and they're worried about the interior pieces rattling. I don't really understand that part, but seriously, like it is that is incredible. This is why you cannot trust consumer reports all the time, because the number four spot is going to the 2021 Hyundai Kona. If you guys are keen viewers, if you watched my last video on the most unreliable cars, then you would remember that, well, it, the Hyundai Kona was also in the most unreliable video. What is, and, and then on top of that, the uh, issues that it says for the Kona, even on this website, are the brakes, suspension, and steering issues. I don't know about you, but compared to the rest of the cars that we've been talking about so far, that sounds like a lot of issues. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff. Most of these cars will have like, oh, uh, maybe brakes, uh, maybe something with the steering. This one has brakes, suspension, and steering. I don't understand consumers and their ratings here, but yeah, the Kona made it at number four. I personally don't think it deserves a number four spot whatsoever, but they put it there. Third place, however, breaking its way into the top three, a podium finish, is the 2022 Toyota Prius. Yep, you thought we were done with Toyotas. You thought they were going to be all out the window. No. The 2022 Toyota Prius is third place, and the only issues that this car does have is keyless entry and some other electronics failure. M it makes sense. A lot, of the, a lot of people nowadays are trying to become electric, EV. We're good for the environment, even though we're digging up so much lithium in africa look how good we are and the prius is obviously going to have some issues with their electronics they're not really fully evolved yet they don't know everything that there is about electronic vehicles yet i would just stay away from electronic vehicles until i get it figured out to be honest but either way the prius only having keyless entry and electronic features fail um is still pretty impressive and the prius has always been a very reliable car i know we all hate it and trust me i don't like it either i would never buy a prius but they really are quite reliable 
Coming in at second place, like I said before, we're all done with the Toyotas, don't worry. Psych, I lied. Toyota in a tuxedo. The 2021 Lexus GX, just like we've talked about before with the Lexus ES and the freaking Mercedes-Benz W124, it does not say the specific model, it just says the GX, so doesn't really i don't know if it really matters but yeah i'm just letting you know the only issues with the gx suv 2020 uno is very minor that's this is what it says very minor suspension issues i don't know exactly what they're talking about by a very minor but honestly it probably is very minor um it's, it's a toyota dude and it's an suv toyota obviously they're gonna have some sort of issues with their steering or suspension or something in, in that area because they're a big vehicle but either way it's a freaking lexus gx it's a luxury toyota it's going to be reliable as hell but first place the most reliable car compared uh, com, 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 what is the word i'm looking for com, um, da, 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 um whatever two consumers is the 2022 mazda cx9 this actually surprised me i've always heard a lot of bad things actually about the mazda cx whether it's a cx7 cx9 and I honestly was surprised that the consumers are putting it as number one. The only problem that they report is the seats, and that's it. And if that's actually the case, and if they're telling the truth, and that they actually know what they're talking about, and the seats are the only problem that this car has, I would agree this is one of the most reliable cars of all time. However, the issue lies within the fact that I don't think consumers actually know what they're talking about. I feel like a lot of these cars on this list, and a lot of you guys are going to be in the comments saying, Mark, that's wrong. This car has these issues, this car has these issues, and so... Most likely, the Mazda CX-9 is not the most reliable in the world, but it still is probably very reliable. I mean, it, it, the CX, Mazda has really been stepping up their game lately. The CX-9 is a nice vehicle. I wouldn't, like, be afraid of it, but I do not think that you should go and buy a CX-9 thinking that the only problem you're going to face is the seats. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of today's video of the top 15 most reliable cars the world has ever seen. I hope you guys enjoy. If you did, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Uh, let me know what other videos you'd like to see. Obviously, we just did a good, bad, and ugly on the 6th Gen Civic, but let me know what other good, bad, and ugly you'd like to see. Did I upload that video already? I don't know. I might have uploaded that video already. I think I think I should have. I don't know if you guys know this, but I like record most of my videos at the beginning of the week, and then I do all the rest of the stuff during the week. So editing it, getting the background clips, stuff like that. So I never know what video is actually going to be first and what video is going to be like before that. So it's kind of hard in the outro to be like, oh, tomorrow's video is going to be this because I never really know what tomorrow's video is going to be. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Love each and every one of you. Das and have a nice night.